Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, like all the people before me, let me start by wishing Epic Foundation a happy 20th birthday with many happy returns. <clears throat> Epic was the brainchild of Paul Xu and Lester Thoreau, whose original goal was to create a bridge of communication between top-tier Taiwanese companies and MIT Sloan School of Management. Over the last decade, this relationship had expanded through the information and communication technology, or ICT sectors, between epic companies such as Acer, Delta Electronics, and Quanta Computers, with MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, and her predecessors, the AI Lab and the Lab for Computer Science. I want to take this opportunity to reflect on the state of computing and what it means to Taiwanese ICT industry. Advances in computing over the last several decades have radically changed the way we live, learn, play, and interact. From iPhones to robotic vacuum cleaners, from Google to YouTube, it has also driven advances in nearly all other fields, from ocean current modeling and weather forecasts to uh, biology and economics. Above all, it has powered the worldwide economy. It is impossible to imagine a world in which there's no spreadsheet, no computer animation, no internet, or no World Wide Web. When computers were first invented, they were large and expensive. Take the IBM 7090 introduced in 1959, for example. It was a mainframe computer um, with 160 megabytes of memory that could execute fewer than 1 million instructions per second, and it cost well over $2 million US. They were the workhorses in the time-sharing era in which many users share a single computer. In the early 80s, workstations and PCs were introduced to the world, making the beginning of the personal computing era, the emergency, emergence of laptop computers in the 90s, enable users to own their own computers whenever uh, they are. During the last decade, we saw the emergence of the mobile and embedded era, and people can use a different, people can own and use different kinds of um, uh, the information devices, from cell phones to um, uh, information appliances, each with considerably more comp computing and storage capabilities than we had just a few decades ago. So for example, if we were to compare IBM mainframe with the Acer netbook, we see the storage and computation performance has increased by many thousand folds, while the cost has reduced by roughly the same amount over the last five decades. Of course, Taiwan played a pivotal role in realizing this remarkable um, technological and hardware evolution. Opening up a laptop or a smartphone, you will more likely than not see fingerprints of Taiwanese companies from chips, boards, LCD panels, networking, and power management modules. So what will the next era of computing be? To answer this question, it is useful to examine some of the lessons learned from the past. Take water, for example. During the early days, people need to provide their own sources of water by digging wells and building irrigation canals. Then we saw the emergence of a centrally managed water supply by way of reservoirs and a distribution network. Water is now a utility that people can use by simply turning on the tap. It is a utility that we buy as we need. Perhaps we can look at electricity as well. People used to have to provide their own electric power through generators and batteries. 
Then we saw the emergency of centrally managed uh, electric power stations and distribution networks. Electricity is now a utility that we can uh, use by flipping on a switch or plugging a device into the wall socket. It is now a utility that we buy as we need. Today, people and enterprises have to own their own computers. But we are seeing the emergency of a centrally managed computing and storage facilities and ubiquitous distribution networks. So computing will soon become a utility in the near future, ushering in an era in which a vast amount of computing will be made available to users on, uh, via the internet. In the so-called cloud computing era, users and computers are decoupled. Users can access computation and services de delivered from massive data center in remote and known locations using a variety of devices. In many ways, it's almost like back to the future. Uh, again, people and computers are separated, except there is a, a scale issue. We are talking about orders of magnitude more complex systems. Cloud computing is a rapidly growing field. Uh, by some estimates, could exceed $160 billion in the next couple of years. It is one of the fastest growing area in ICT, even in the current economic climate. This computing on demand paradigm will have significant effect on the computing industry as we know it and will alter the landscape of Taiwanese ICT industries dramatically. The market for computing will change radically over the next decade. There will be ever increasing demand for data centers that can host hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of servers. Corporations and other enterprises will change the way they will provision computing infrastructure utilizing private and perhaps hybrid uh, clouds. There will be great need for energy conscious, consciousness since energy cost is by far the largest expense for data centers. There are several, there are several levels that uh, technology can help. First, energy waste must be minimized and in areas such as cooling and power conversion. Second, energy efficient processors, for example, multi-core, must be utilized whenever possible. Third, computer science can play a role in reducing energy use by in introducing new programming languages, compilers, and to be able to meter and learn from user demographics and workload, etc. The demand for desktop and laptop machines, the backbone for the Taiwanese computing industry, will decrease over time. Laptop computers are likely to be replaced by much thinner clients because computation and storage will not be local. We don't know exactly what these clients will look like, but there will probably be many of them with different fact form factors and capabilities. They will be energy efficient, and they will be able to access the internet through browsers, therefore reducing the dependency on the particular operating system. However, they must have excellent I.O. capabilities with natural interfaces. I want to show you a, um, a prototype of such a, a system that we developed uh, together with Quanta Computers. And this is a system we call uh, a, a city browser. And this is a system uh, um, uh, that will allow a user to dynamically ca customize the application to suit his or her needs by typing, speaking, and gesturing. It can understand multiple languages and can provide more than simple factoid answers. So you will be able to take unstructured information like sentences and paragraphs and summarizing them. The entire computation is living in the cloud. So this person is changing from Boston to Orlando, uh, Florida by simply typing in the name of the city and, and this, the information is instantly available. 
restaurants, museums, and hotels in four cities in the Orlando area. Can I see the Chinese restaurants in Orlando? There are 19 Chinese restaurants in Orlando. Some are on East Colonial Drive, South Kirkman Road, and West Colonial Drive. Can I get the phone number for Tasty Walk? The phone number of Tasty Walk is area code 407-896-8988.我想找鼎泰丰。有四个餐馆叫做鼎泰丰，其中大多数提供下午茶、中餐、小吃、早餐。他们大多数在中孝东路、信义路、中山北路。在信义路上的鼎泰丰有什么特色菜吗？鼎